I got a text last night, and that text read, and I quote, Y'all gotta fire Billy. You are Locked On Gators, your daily podcast on the Florida Gators. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Lockdown Gators, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Lockdown Gators your first listen of the day every day. We are available daily and free wherever you listen to podcasts. Happy Wednesday. I'm Brandon Olson. Find me on Twitter at WNS underscore Brandon. Find all my written work with Whole Nine Sports, Giants, Country, NFL 33. Today's episode of Lockdown Gators is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. If your team wins, visit fanduel.com slash locked on to get started. Also, if you're part of the subtext group, two weeks free, five bucks a month, join subtext.com slash locked on gators. You knew some of this information here, um, but we're going to go more in depth with it. And for me right now, like just going back to that text um, that I got, which by the way, was from someone in media covers a different school and the text and i will read it back again the the exact exact quote of it y'all gotta fire billy here's the thing the florida gators do not gotta fire billy napier and before we even talk about why people think that the Florida Gators don't have to fire Billy Napier. There's no need to fire Billy Napier. He might work out. He might not. But, and I've continued to say this, one of the main reasons that I do not believe Florida should fire Billy Napier, let's completely throw out the, the will they, won't they, can they. I don't think they should because Florida Gators fans, we, we, we sat here. And we cried and cried and cried about, we need to stop firing coaches after three years. You've got to give them time to work out. Year two just wrapped up. I, just, I can't in good conscience, knowing that I'm, I'm a man of my word and knowing that I'm a man that stands on business, I cannot possibly say, yeah. I Because I, I also said, you got to give them time. I'm not one that's going to say to after year two, say that it's cooked. The reason that I got that text, though, was because of recruiting, because some things aren't going awesome right now. But it all circles back to something that we spoke about on this show weeks ago. Florida under Billy Napier. And before Billy Napier, but I mean, obviously, we're not talking about before Billy Napier. Florida under Billy Napier, and it's probably felt like it's increased under Billy Napier, is constantly taking what I call public perception L's. It's as simple as that. Public perception L's are constantly what's been just bombarding and a, a complete barrage of public perception L's onto Florida. That's what it is. Internally, yes, there are people who are like, hey, Billy, you, you kind of got to rein it in a little bit. You got to get a little bit of control over this. Yeah. In, internally, there are people like that. On the roster, the huge majority of players are 100% bought in. You look at, how about this? Every damn week that Hayden Hansen joined this show, Florida Gators starting tight end, every week that he was here, he was constantly, if you want to be a Gator, you'll be here. If you want to see this through, you'll be here. I'm bought in. Like that's, like, that's what we bleed. You look at Kelby Collins and his Instagram post this past weekend of the people who want to be here to write the ship will be here to write the ship. I spoke to multiple players in recent weeks and months, honestly, when I was down in Gainesville. For the Arkansas game, I spoke to players in person there, and obviously I'm not going to name names, but they were just like, hey, man, like, honestly, my biggest concern is I just hope that they give him the chance. That's the player's concern. 
that they they think we can turn this around. We're bought in. We like this culture. I just hope that he gets the chance to turn it around. Internally, obviously, we know things aren't all sunshine and rainbows and daisies. But internally, there is not nearly as much, we'll say, negativity as there is from the outside looking in. You look at recruiting-wise, it's no secret. Xavier Filsimi almost definitely flipping to Texas. Okay? You look at Amaris Williams. I don't know where he's flipping, but it sounds like he's not going to be a Florida Gator. Okay? Those are big losses. Jamonta Waller, just what? A little over a month ago at this point, maybe maybe around, around a month ago, we'll say. Jamonta Waller flips from Florida to Auburn. You look at the players that Florida's lost to the transfer portal. I don't mean the ones that never saw the field. I don't mean the ones that were never going to see the field. I mean, we're talking public perception L's. Prince Uman Yellen. I don't care how you feel about him. I don't care how I feel about him. He's a potentially all-SEC player. He's a future NFL player. He's going to play on Sundays, without a doubt. Trevor Etienne, I don't care how you feel about him. I don't care how I feel about him. He's a future NFL player, right? They both hit the transfer portal. Prince Lumon Mielin had a chance to go to the NFL and legitimately be an early day two pick, he's choosing not to go to the NFL, but to go to a different college to develop and get ready for the NFL. Trevor Etienne leaving Florida. And when we spoke about this two weeks ago, and so many comments were, were on here that's like, oh, you're just saying this for, for clicks. You, you don't know anything here. Two weeks ago, I said, Trevor Etienne, is probably hitting the portal and probably going to Georgia. And as of, what, yesterday, maybe the day before, he was, yes, crystal balled, predicted, whatever you want to call it, to go to Georgia. They are the front runners. Those are public perception L's. Go back to almost a year ago, the Jaden Rashada situation, public perception L. And not just off-field L's either. You look at the Arkansas game. Florida had a a legitimate chance to be bowl eligible going into their bye. They were what? Five and two? Five and two at the bye? After the bye comes, you go Georgia, loss, which Georgia's Georgia. You go two and six Arkansas in Gainesville, loss. On the road to Missouri, loss. Uh, On the road at LSU, loss. At home against Florida State's backup, loss. I had LSU and Missouri flipped backwards, by the way. They went to LSU and then Missouri. Um, But you look at all, all those things. The national scene, the Utah game week one, every time this year where Florida was on a national stage, Things didn't go their way, aside from the Tennessee game. Public perception L's are a big issue under Billy Napier. Internally, things are not nearly as bad as they seem externally, but public perception L's. Like, I get people on my comments every time. Every time I talk about something negative, I get people in the YouTube comments that are like, why are you saying these things? Recruits are going to see this. Recruits are going to think that this is that this is a horrible place to go. You're turning away recruits. Here's the thing. If a recruit is watching my show and taking my opinion, if a recruit's watching Locked On Gators and taking Locked On Gators' opinion, one, they know I'm just telling the truth, and two, they're looking for it. You know where they're not necessarily looking for it, but it just pops up? Twitter, where you get more national names out there, where you get on three and 24-7. Is Billy Napier on the hot seat before the season even began? 
public perception elves are a very real thing that Florida's dealt with and is trying to continue dealing with, but they have to right the ship at some point. And guess what we're going to do here? We're going to talk for the rest of this show, all 15, 20 minutes, whatever it is, however long we go, we're going to talk about writing the ship because Billy Napier needs to do it expeditiously, if not sooner. Great Cat Williams, by the way. Just just that little bit. I'm, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Before we talk about writing the ship, Today's episode of Lockdown Gators is brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to have as many top-tier candidates as possible to interview. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs is the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just another stupid little job board. LinkedIn has a vast network of more than a billion professionals. I got a notification yesterday that Kevin Durant was posting something that might interest me. Everyone is on that thing, all right? Hiring's easy when you have that many quality candidates. Maybe Kevin Durant's one of them. So easy, in fact, that 80, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. LinkedIn knows that small businesses are wearing so many hats and might not have the time or resources to hire. And thankfully, with LinkedIn, that process is intuitive, quick, and easy. And they even launched a feature that helps you write job descriptions, making the process even easier and quicker. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash lockdown college. That's linkedin.com slash lockdown college. Post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Thanks again for making Lockdown Gators your first listen of the day. Every day we are available daily and free right in the podcast. And now we're, we're talking about writing the ship for Billy Napier. I'm going to start with Two things, really. One, fill out your freaking coaching staff. It's been almost two weeks. Actually, has it been more than two weeks now? It's been two weeks since Billy Napier fired, let go, parted ways. Frankly, I don't give a damn what the term you want to use is. I will say fire because I think that's what it was but fired Corey Raymond and Sean Spencer, defensive back coach, defensive line coach. It wasn't until this past Sunday that the Will Harris, actually Sunday that Will Harris news officially broke. Monday, the news, the Will Harris news got finalized there. So for Florida, that's like, that's when Florida officially announced it. That was your hire there. Will Harris, the name. Okay. D line coach, still nothing. Offensive line coach, which we were anticipating, still nothing yet. Again, subtext insiders know, know quite a few things. Um, but officially, nothing. I'm not concerned about why hasn't Billy Napier signed a, uh, hired a special teams coach? Here's the, th- here's the reason Billy Napier hasn't prioritized hiring a special teams coach. Because he's not out here recruiting for special teams right now. He's recruiting for offense and defense. You can, because think about it, special teams is kicker, punter, long snapper. Okay? You're not recruiting those right here, okay? You're recruiting players who are going to play on offense and defense because at any given time, what? Nine or ten, or I guess we'll say, yeah, we can say nine or ten. Nine or ten of the players on special teams are other position players that are also playing special teams. You're recruiting those guys right now, okay? That's why he's not prioritizing hiring a special teams coordinator. I'm not saying he's going to, but that's that's why I don't care that he hasn't done it yet. But for Florida, you've got to fill out this coaching staff. I I understand that so many people were like, hey. Xavier Filsimi knew that Will Harris was going to get hired by Florida because we'd heard recruits knew who it was going to be. I don't want to hear. Xavier Filsimi was like on the fence before because you know what did not help the Xavier Filsimi recruitment? Whether or not he officially, at the time of recording this late Tuesday night, he has not officially done anything. But he hasn't officially done anything. You know what didn't help? Not having a defensive backs coach for almost two weeks. 
That sure as hell didn't help. Fill out your coaching staff immediately. Recruiting wise, convince LJ McCray to stay in the class. We know that he went on a very brief visit to Florida State. We know that he then went on a visit to Auburn. Florida came out of this weekend feeling a little bit better than they did going into it about LJ McCray. Convince him to stay in your class. Okay? Land commitments from some of your 2024 targets that you're looking at. Gregory Smith III pushed back his commitment to next Wednesday, which, by the way, I know that a lot of Gators fans saw that on Twitter and were like, oh, my God. We can't even get him to commit. The plan, to my knowledge, for weeks, the plan was to push back that commitment to December 20th. Then I think it was on three reported that he wouldn't do that. And the next day, he does that. Um, So I'm not surprised at all about the Gregory Smith moving back of his commitment date. That doesn't worry me. Lock him in. I think Florida still feels good. And honestly, if he goes to Florida or Toledo, I'll be happy. Um... But for Florida, I think you still feel good about Gregory Smith. Lock him in. Running back Jaden Ball. His decision's coming up soon. He's got a visit set to uh, Alabama this weekend. He's got, I think, Georgia Tech staff is visiting him in home today, Wednesday. Florida went to visit him yesterday. It feels like it's like he's not an Arkansas kid. It feels like a Maris Williams, but Arkansas. Like that's what it feels like. Where for Florida or for a Maris Williams, it feels like Florida, like he's committed to Florida, but it feels like he's going to Auburn or Ohio State. Like other schools are recruiting him as if he's not committed anywhere. I feel like that's the feel with Jaden Ball right now. It's like, yeah, he's committed to Arkansas, but Florida feels good about him. Alabama's pushing. Georgia Tech is is visiting. Don't think Arkansas feels super confident about how things are going for them. But land some of these commitments for 2024. If Xavier Filsame does flip, which again is the expectation, I'm looking for, and I said this to the subtext group yesterday, early afternoon probably, that I'm looking at a player who I will, when the name comes out, I will confirm it's who I'm talking about, but a a safety from the west coast a db from the west coast okay that's why i'm looking forward to be kind of added to this group a little bit but for florida you you gotta write the ship somehow you gotta get some public perception w's keeping lj mccray in your class is a public perception w it's not as big a w as flipping someone but it's it's a w to keep him especially when you're probably going to lose xavier phil and damaris williams Keep LJ McCray, keep DJ Lagway. Get maybe Zay Mincy as a target. Flip Jameer Grimsley from Alabama. Something where you've got to lock it the hell in because you are not looking good in the eyes of the national public. We also have to talk about the transfer portal where Florida, I know, I know that there's a lot of Florida Gators fans pissed about so much. We'll talk about that in just a second. As the weather gets colder, the NFL offers stay hot on FanDuel right now. New customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. I need to I need to talk about this for one second. I I laddered I laddered uh Nikola Jokic's assist yesterday because I was like, oh my god, they're playing the Bulls. Uh Jamal Murray's out. So I was like, yeah, Jokic 10 assists. Jokic 12 assists, Jokic 14. I'd have gone up to a thousand if you let me, FanDuel. Okay, not a thousand, but I I would have gone with with a pretty high number. He got ejected before halftime with six assists. So he was pacing to to climb a couple rungs of that ladder, but it broke my heart. Visit fanduel.com slash locked on, kick off the NFL season. I remember that FanDuel is an official partner of the NFL. Thanks for making Locked On Gators your first listen of the day. Every day we are available daily and free wherever you listen to podcasts. Now, when we talk about writing the ship, I think that we have to talk about Florida in the transfer portal. 
and I, I'm going to talk about the guy that I know he, he he was on campus this past weekend. It was a good visit for Florida with Joey Slackman out of Penn defensive lineman that they view as that, that big end tackle role. Um, do everything you can to get him to commit because that would be a huge, huge public perception W there. Like just looking at the 2024 transfer portal top players, I'm looking at on three. Um, frankly, they're quicker than 24 seven with it, but Joey Slackman is the number 12 overall player on the portal. And I, I didn't even realize they have him predicted as going to Florida, which again, like I said, he had a good visit this weekend. He feels good about Florida. Florida feels good about him. He's the second defensive line in the transfer portal class behind only Walter Nolan. But I understand why so many Florida Gators fans are like, you got to lock him in. You shouldn't have let him leave campus without committing. And here's the thing that, that Joey Slackman said is that he is intending on taking a couple of visits this week, going home to Comac, New York, which not even an hour from me. I, I can go there with signs if you guys want. Uh, come back New York this weekend, come back and he said like a week and a half on Sunday. So I'm assuming middle of next week and make his decision. He's got a commitment timeline. I understand when people are like, Oh, like you gotta, you can't let him leave campus without committing. You gotta do, I understand that thought process, but you also have to understand that when people have a commitment timeline and they stick to it. First off, that's what you want. Like, I, I don't care. I understand how cool it would have been if he if he committed while he was on campus. Personally, I want every kid to to have if they have a commitment timeline, wait till that timeline and then make your decision. Like, don't feel like you rushed it because you were pressured to commit and then you're gonna be unhappy and hit the portal. I don't want any of that crap. He's got a commitment timeline that he plans on sticking to. Go ahead, do it. But it'd be a huge public perception win for Billy Napier to go into the portal and add an immediate impact player on the defensive line. Okay? Huge public perception win. Do I don't care if Joey Slackman's looking for NIL. I don't care if he's looking for playing time. I don't care what he's looking for. Promise, whatever you can actually deliver on, get Joey Slackman in orange and blue. Okay? Then land at least two more immediate starters, like bona fide immediate starters. Ideally, you add three or four, but at least two more immediate bona fide starters to your transfer portal class right now. I don't care if you're looking at uh, offensive tackle, which you desperately need one. Go bring in a left tackle, move Austin Barber back to right tackle, Put Damian George as one of the backups at, I mean, honestly, you could play him at guards and tackle spots and leave him there. I don't think that you need to worry about your center or left guard spots. I understand like Jake Slaughter and uh, Richie Leonard IV. I don't think you have to worry about them. I also, I was in a Twitter space yesterday and someone was like, oh, Micah Mizuka is playing right guard. He played left guard at, ba at Baylor. That's why he was bad. No, he was bad because his shoulder was jacked up during the offseason and he clearly had no punch last year. Playing Switching sides as a guard is not even close to as difficult as switching sides as a tackle. Way easier to do at guard. So that's not as valid as an excuse. So get a left tackle, move Austin Barber to right tackle, back to right tackle where he was better. Okay? Get a corner if you can. I realize that the corner class hasn't been awesome in the transfer portal so far, so I get it if that's not something that you can really go for. But if there's a corner you can get, get them. Uh, if you want to look at wide receiver, try to get that. There's plenty of guys at receiver in the portal, and, and plenty of them that can fit actual roles in this offense specifically. Uh, plenty of guys available there. If you're looking at the edge group, replace Prince Liuman Mielin with someone else from the portal if you possibly can. If you're looking at 
uh, a, a depth running back because you just lost Trevor Etienne, or if you're looking for someone who can split carries with Montreal legitimately, then maybe do that. But you you have plenty of positions where you can add an immediate starter on your team, offensively and defensively. There are spots to be had. Land at least two more immediate bona fide starters with Joey Slackman. Because again, public perception, not great, but you got to finish, you got to hit the transport hard because you're, you're essentially coaching with your back against the wall this year. You have to hit the portal hard if you're Billy Napier. Thanks for making Lockdown Gators your first listen of the day every day. You're available daily and free for listen to the podcast. We'll be back tomorrow, maybe later today. Who knows what's going to happen. For Lockdown Gators, I'm Brandon Olson. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at WNS underscore Brandon. Find all my written work at Whole Line Sports, Giants, Country, NFL 33, and I'll see you all tomorrow.